The Jedi class is one of the highlights of Movie Battles 2, being the most unique take on Jedi in multiplayer games to date. Some people who play Jedi Academy may believe that the Jedi mechanics are the same, but this mod has greatly changed combat. The Jedi are bound to be the same power level as other single life classes, and a good gunner can take out any Jedi. This part of the guide series will focus on Jedi vs Gunner gameplay. Jedi have a fixed 100 health points, but this is misleading. The class has natural resistance against all types of weapons except for sniper rifles. This makes Jedi have about 125 practical base HP. Before getting into how Jedi can deal with blasters, the loadouts that can be equipped must be discussed. The default loadout is great in and of itself, but walking through the essentials of what should be chosen is important. The most important upgrade to choose is the saber style. Beginners should choose the first middle option because the style is easiest to learn and use. The Saber Defense upgrade is essential to almost every Jedi's kit. It allows the Jedi to block blaster bolts and Saber strikes. Each level grants a better blocking radius. Most of the time, keeping the ability at level 3 is optimal, so the specifics of each level will not be discussed in this video. Another essential to grab is Force Block. This has no bearing on Jedi vs Gunner gameplay and will only protect you from Jedi randomly pushing you to the ground. The last ability that is essential for beginners to choose is Force Push. This power will be discussed in a later section. One additional power to choose is Force Deflect, which allows Jedi to accurately deflect blaster bolts. This too will also be discussed later. Now time for the basics of blocking blaster bolts. When Jedi stand still, even with their saber turned on, they will not automatically block blaster bolts. The main way to block is to hold the secondary fire button. The default for this button is the right mouse button. While holding this key down, the Jedi's movement will be slowed. Blocking blaster bolts in Movie Battles 2 takes Force Points, or FP. Your FP is represented at the bottom right of the screen as the blue bar next to your red health bar. Another way to block is by moving. To do this, a Jedi just has to have his lightsaber powered on while running. This drains more FP than normal blocking though, so caution is required when using this method. Use the right click block mostly when defending allies and use a combination of the two types of block to close in on gunners. Be cautious and do not get surrounded though. With Saber Defense 3, Jedi have a wide blocking arc, but the Jedi cannot defend against blaster shots against the back. Remember to block while jumping, because it will not slow the character while in the air. While knocked over, Jedi cannot block. Make sure to use the quick get up when facing gunners by pressing jump or crouch. Do not use this get up though when faced by a Jedi, because while in this animation, Jedi cannot block sabers. When all their FP is gone, Jedi are defenseless. The closer the gunner is, the more FP damage that their blaster bolts will deal. The difference in damage will depend on each weapon. Do not worry about this too much, it's just an important detail to remember. Before moving on, a small note on Saber Deflect. To use Saber Deflect, one must M block. To M block, Hold right click, then hold left click, or in other words, hold the secondary attack button, then the primary attack button. If the enemy is too close, the bolts may not deflect based on the level purchased. Each upgrade reduces the cost and dead zone radius of the power. Holding M block to deflect accurately does not allow FP regeneration, and actually costs extra FP for every deflection, so use the power wisely. Now that basic defense has been covered, it is time to discuss how attacking with a saber works. Lightsabers can be swung in seven directions. Your swing direction is determined by the movement key that is held. To do diagonal swings, use two directional buttons. Horizontal swings have the best overall coverage for people who try to dodge left and right. The overhead swing is best used to easily hit downed opponents, and the diagonal swings strike a good balance between the two. One interesting note is that if a gunner holsters his weapons, crouches, and looks down, horizontal swings will pass straight over their head. Use the overhead or carefully aimed diagonal swings to hit these opponents. While swinging, Jedi are vulnerable to attack. The only way to prevent getting shot while swinging is swing blocking. To swing block, swing then immediately hold the block button. This forces the Jedi to walk, but if the Jedi is shot during the swing, the shot will be blocked. In the current patch as of the making of this video, when Jedi are shot while swinging or swing blocking, 
they suffer knockback. The amount of knockback is based on how close the Jedi is to the gunner. This mechanic keeps Sabrus from wildly swinging up against accurate opponents. Knockback is reduced when airborne. Swinging while jumping makes it much easier for gunners to duck and dodge swings though. Smart dodging while swinging, calculated jumps, and using what we discussed in the next section are the best solutions when facing those using this mechanic to their advantage. The final important factor in Jedi vs. Gunner gameplay is Force Powers. Many Force Powers are available to the aspiring Jedi, but the easiest and probably best is Force Push. Other Force Powers will be discussed in a separate video dedicated to all of them. Force Push Level 1 costs 40 FP to activate. It pushes grenades and gives people who run a small shove to the side. It isn't very powerful, but can be used to push reckless people off of ledges. Level 2 reduces the cost of the power by half. Level 3 is a massive upgrade in almost every way. It increases range, redirects pushable projectiles more accurately, and knocks down players that are running. The power will even shove around walking players. These traits make Force Push an amazing support power and an essential tool for Jedi novices. Putting it all together, a Jedi's goal in the one versus one situation is to use a combination of blocking and running to close the distance on gunners and push them down if they try to run away. A Jedi must be cautious though, because while using Force Powers, Jedi cannot block. Also, Force Push Level 3 will push a player who is walking a small distance if they do not run thus making it more difficult to reach the opponent. A Jedi can try to use this to their advantage by pushing gunners off of ledges. If gunners are smart though, they can crouch and reduce the push distance by half to try to mitigate this strategy a bit. One tactic that can be used to get a knockdown is running right up close to the enemy. The gunner here has two options, standing their ground and possibly getting sabered, or running and getting pushed over. Most gunners will choose to run to try to dodge, and at that point can easily be knocked over with a push. The problem is that the gunner can just stand their ground and shoot, putting the Jedi in a bad position. If the two players are of equal skill, the Jedi will usually have to work their way to the gunner and just react to the player's attempted dodges. The Jedi's role in teamfights is mainly support. Their ability to block blaster fire and repel grenades make them great frontline fighters. Try not to take up allies cover while at the same time making more for them while blocking. Make sure not to push the limits of your defense. Run to cover when reaching about 30% FP. Use force push on enemy gunners to prevent them from running to dodge your teammates blaster bolts when in team fights. This will make them go along a lot more swimmingly. Jedi must be aware of smart enemies who will target them when they try this though, because you cannot block while using force push. Also. They must be aware of certain enemy gunners that will use the Jedi as cover while also shooting that same Jedi, so that they must retreat. Try to maneuver in a way that will allow your own gunners to attack these enemies. When classes shoot rockets, they have a startup sound. The time that they fire is slightly randomized, but can be easily reacted to. Just calm down and focus, then push the rocket away from teammates. Be careful when pushing explosives. If a Jedi accidentally pushes a grenade or rocket into a teammate, they will gain TK points. When the team is pushing, the Jedi should take to the front lines and engage other saber users to stop them from cutting down their allies. When the team is not pushing, the worst thing a Jedi can do is go and run off by himself. This makes the saber wielder an easy target and opens up the Jedi's team to attack. That covers the basics of Jedi vs. Gunner gameplay. Please keep in mind that new players should play Gunner for a while before picking up Jedi. Watch how Jedi play towards Gunners and learn the matchup for yourself. Do not be afraid to ask for extra tips from players. Most importantly, persevere and keep learning even if you're being crushed by better players. This is the Ranger 1245. See you next video.